Good morning and welcome to Trinity United Methodist Church. My name is Rob Almey and I am the pastor here at Trinity. We are delighted that you are here to worship with us. We have a special Sunday worship service this morning as we celebrate what is known as All Saints Sunday in the life of the church where we take one Sunday out of the year to remember those that have gone on before us that have blazed the, the trail of faith and have meant so much to us in our lives as we remember them and countless others who now surround the throne of God and are praising and worshiping the Lord in heaven. So I want to welcome you this morning. If you're a guest with us, we're especially happy that you are here to worship with us. And if you regularly attend with us, we are glad that you are here to worship with us as well. And whether you're a guest or regularly attend here, we're going to ask that you would uh, kindly consider uh, filling out our guest registration form. It, it is uh, found in the description of the video uh, for this morning. You can find that. Just click on that and it'll take you to a Google form. And if you just be kind enough to fill out that Google form, we would sure appreciate it. It would bless us to know that you were here with us worshiping on this Sunday. There's a couple of announcements I want to bring to your attention as uh, it is All Saints Sunday and it is the first Sunday of the month. We will be uh, having Holy Communion. So if you have not um, set up your elements already, I would invite you to go ahead and to do so. If you have some bread in the house, some grape juice, that would be the best. But if you don't have that, um, any type of bread will do. Um, a type of, of juice would uh, be good. Um, we do ask that you would uh, keep those uh, elements as sacred as possible and as close to the bread and the cup that we usually experience in church as you celebrate Holy Communion. I also want to share with you the exciting news that I shared with you a little bit about um, the last Sunday, and that is that uh, we are returning to in-person worship on Sunday, November the 15th. Our district superintendent has signed off on our plan, so it is now official that we will come back on Sunday, November the 15th, for a 1030 worship service here in the sanctuary. We'll just start off with one service. Of course, we'll be doing that under the uh, strict safety uh, protocols that have been laid out in our plan. You'll be getting some more information about that via email, also uh, by written letter. We also have put together a, a video that talks about some of those different things so that you can be well informed about what that will look like. We're actually going to be having a trial run for that November 15th service. And so we're having a trial run here on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. on November the 8th. On November the 8th will be our trial run. If you'd like to be a part of that, we're going to ask that you go ahead and contact the church. We have to limit that to about 15 people for our trial run. We're just trying to get the kinks out and try to find those spots where we can do a little bit better and create the safest environment possible. So if you're interested in, in coming uh, for a trial run worship service on November the 8th, uh, just please contact our, our church office and we'll be sure to put your name down as one of the ones that is coming for our trial run on November the 8th. But everybody is welcome uh, to come on November the 15th at 10.30 a.m. Having made all those announcements, having given you that uh, welcome, I'm going to ask that you would join with me in the call to worship. You can find that printed in your order of worship. We remember, O oh God, the countless saints of history who have blazed a trail of courage through time. We remember, O oh God, the tender touch of loved ones, the example of heroes, the healing words of comforters, the remarkable acts of fearless ones. We remember, O oh God, the gentle strength of grandmothers, the loyalty of friends, the kindness of strangers, the joy of children, the sacrifice of parents. We remember, O oh God, the supreme love of Jesus, the blessing of his spirit, the reminder of his words, the sharing of his suffering, the glory of his resurrection, shown forth in the lives of his disciples, young and old, dead and living, articulate and silent, strange and familiar, brilliant and ordinary. We remember in every time and place the saints of God who have shown us the Lord. 
since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us worship God with joy. Will you join me in a word of prayer? Let's pray. Oh, gracious God, on this All Saints Sunday, as we gather to worship you, we remember and give thanks to you for those that have gone on before us, even those that have worshiped at Trinity United Methodist Church in the same place as part of this same church family. We give you thanks, O oh God, for their witness. And most of all, we thank you for your son Jesus in whose name we gather. We pray, O oh God, that as we remember those that have gone on before us, that you would receive all the praise and the thanksgiving, that you'd receive all the glory and the honor as we worship this morning. Visit us with your Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, manifest your presence to change our hearts, to refresh our minds, that the worship this morning would be acceptable to you. We pray all this in the sweet and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is number 710, and the hymn is called Faith of Our Fathers. You can find the words up there on the screen or in the printed order of worship. Number 710, Faith of Our Fathers. I'd like to welcome all of the children that are worshiping with us this morning. We are certainly glad that you are worshiping with us. And as we come for the time for all God's children on this All Saints Sunday, I wanted to tell you a little bit about a special interest that I have, one of the, the hobbies, I guess you might say, that I have. And one of the things that I have a special interest in is something called ancestry. Ancestry is just kind of a, a fancy way of saying, knowing about who you are related to, that who is in your family tree, as we sometimes like to call it. Well, uh, ancestry and finding out who you're related to and your ancestors that go way back has come a long, long way with the advent of, of new, uh, the coming of new technologies, new ways to to figure that type of, of stuff out. In fact, there is uh, one uh, particular thing called Ancestry.com, and, and this will sound actually a little gross, but, but what you do is, and I, and I did it, is that you, you spit in this little 
vile thing, and then you send it off somewhere, and they take something called your DNA. It's your special marker about who you are that you have in common with your ancestors, the people in your family, and they match you, and then they're able to help you discover who your ancestors are. Well, one of the things about discovering your family and your ancestors is you get to learn a little bit about their stories, that there's people in your family, whether you knew them or not, that had some great stories. And so, of course, there might be your mom or dad, or you might even know your, your grandparents if you're fortunate. And if you're really fortunate, you might know your great grandparents. But when you get even further beyond them, you probably didn't know those people, but you might hear some stories about them. You might hear how great they were, or you might hear some special characteristics or things that, that they accomplished in life. Well, one of the things that we celebrate about our families is that they often pass down faith to us. And so our grandparents might have passed down faith to our parents, and our parents might now be passing down faith to us, and we might one day pass down faith to our children and so forth and, and so on down the line. And so for All Saints Sunday, we come together to remember those people in our family, our ancestors even, that have gone on to be with the Lord, that they're no longer with us, that they've passed away, but we celebrate and give thanks to God for the difference that they've made in our lives, whether we knew them or not, because maybe they've made a difference by making a difference in somebody else's life that have now made a difference in our lives. But you know, we give thanks to God, not only for those blood relatives in our family, but we are also part of what we call the family of faith, the whole church. We're all a family of faith, and we've had loved ones in our church who have been part of our church congregation that have also gone on to be with the Lord, and they made such a difference during their time here with us. And so we want to give thanks to them, for them. And of course, we also want to give thanks for those biblical saints in the Bible, those special Bible figures, that because of them, we are here today. And so that's what All Saints Sunday is about. So I hope in this service that you'll spend some time thinking about those from your family. Maybe they are not here with us, or maybe they're a living saint, and they're helping you in your faith. So will you join me in a word of prayer this morning? Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you so much for those who have passed on faith to us. We thank you, O oh God, for those that have made a difference to us, who have loved us and cared for us. And Lord, though some of those we might not see anymore, we give thanks that they now have the promise that they are in your presence, praising you. Lord, we thank you for those that are living saints to us, that love us and take care of us and tell us about your love. We pray that you bless them all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Earlier in the last uh, week and a half or so, I have invited the congregation to submit the names of those saints that have gone on to their eternal home now, but that have made a difference in our lives. Some of those persons that were part of Trinity United Methodist Church, and many of us know them, Others were part of our families, or maybe they were just even friends, and the names might just be known to the person that submitted their name. Or there might be persons this morning that we didn't have a chance to submit their names, but we submit them this morning in our hearts to the Lord. And so as part of our All Saints Sunday Remembrance, I'm going to be reading the names of those saints that have been submitted. We'll be ringing a, a bell to remember them and lighting a candle to signify our gratitude towards God for the light that they were to us, for how they now continue in perpetual light. 
As we light each candle, you'll notice that the light will continue to grow. And that's what the great saints of our lives and our faith do to us. As they've passed down their faith to us, and we continue the light to be their torch bearers. I ask your, uh, and beg your forgiveness in advance if I mispronounce names. Know that that is an omission of the head and not of the heart. And so, Lord God, we give thanks to you for those that have been saints to us in our lives. We thank you, O oh God, for Madison Rose Clodius. Frank Albert. Mona Boston. Andy Boston. Joe Boston. Matthew Adams. Joseph P. Worley, Jr. Eileen C. Worley. James C. Rector. Mary N. Rector. O. B. Gates. Nancy Gates. Walter Rex. Florence Rex. Nancy Page Gates. Margaret Miller. Robert Miller. Debbie Kaufman Andrus. Phyllis Almy. Don Skinner. Rod Clodius. Bill Weatherly. Lavon Weatherly. Elmer Morris. Emma Morris. Aaron Lavon Myers.
Lynn Gilliland. Jean Clift. Frida Clift. Brian Clift. Newell Thompson. Veda Compton. Carol Shelton. Robert Minter. Betty Rogers. Mary Elaine Fairbank Twig. Austin Davis Twig the Third. Michael Harden. Warren Bain. We have one last candle. That last candle has been reserved for those that go unnamed that are in our hearts. If you would like to comment on the video and leave the name of that person so that you might remember them, you are welcome to do that. But we light this last candle for the unnamed on our hearts. Will you join me in prayer? Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for all the saints who ever worshipped you, whether in brush arbors or cathedrals, weathered wooden churches or crumbling cement meeting houses, where your name was lifted and adored. We give you thanks, O God, for hands lifted in praise, manicured hands and hands stained with grease or soil, strong hands and hands gnarled with age, holy hands used as wave offerings across the land. We thank you, O God, for hard-working saints, whether hard-hatted or steel-booted, head-ragged or aproned, blue-collared or three-piece suit. They left their mark on the earth for you for us, for our children to come. Thank you, O oh God, for the tremendous sacrifices made by those who have gone before us, who are your saints, that we have named before you, both aloud and in our hearts. Bless the memory of your saints, O oh God. May they be precious to us, and may they always dwell in our hearts and in our minds. May we learn how to walk wisely from the examples of these saints, the example of their faith, their dedication, their worship, and their love. All this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is from... Paul's letter to the church at a place called Philippi, Philippians, chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Paul writes, Do not be anxious about anything, 
but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to god and the peace of god which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in christ jesus this is the word of god for the people of god thanks be to god if you're just joining us uh, this morning, we want to welcome you and we want to encourage you, if you have not already uh, done so, to go ahead and to fill out the uh, registration form, the link for which you can find there in the description of the video. Also in that description of the video, you'll find a link to the message download. That's the outline for my message this morning. We invite you to go ahead and print that off and to follow along. There are some fill in the blanks, though I assure you there won't be any tests given but it is uh, good as a resource for you to revisit the message for this morning, <clears throat> to revisit some of the scriptures that are lifted up, to just use that as a resource. But before we get into today's message, if you would join me in a word of prayer, let's pray. Gracious God, send your Holy Spirit now to unplug our ears and to unplug our heart. Lord, we pray that you would help us to focus on your word proclaimed this morning we pray, O oh God, that you would help us to receive what you'd have us to receive, and that your word would not return back to you void, but that it would dwell richly in our hearts and our minds, that we might draw closer to you, that our walk with you might be strengthened, that we might find comfort and peace, that we might find challenge and inspiration. But we pray most of all, O oh God, that the words that are spoken this morning would bring glory and honor to you, we pray all this in the strong and powerful name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. Today we are beginning a, a brand new series of messages here at Trinity United Methodist Church called Anxious for Nothing, Finding Calm in a Chaotic World. Well, I don't have to tell you that these are some anxious times, church, that we find ourselves living in. The question that this series addresses, the kind of the larger question is, how do we as followers of Jesus, in the midst of these chaotic times, in the midst of these unprecedented times, how do we respond and deal with the anxiety that is no doubt produced in the midst of these unprecedented chaotic times? This four week series based on a book by the same name by Max Locato. This four week series is intended and my hope and prayer is that it will equip you with a biblical way for dealing with anxiety in your life. Whether it surfaces because of a pandemic, whether it surfaces because of something you're going through at work or in your family, or something that just might cause you anxiety that is the run-of-the-mill everyday type of thing. I hope you will be equipped with a biblical apparatus to deal with that anxiety. Let's start by asking what is anxiety anyways? Well anxiety is kind of like a, a meteor shower of what-ifs. It's what-ifs that, that we turn around in our mind over and over again what ifs that you and I, where we, we constantly rehearse in our mind the worst case scenarios, or we constantly rehearse unfavorable outcomes about life events. You know, it's important when we ask the question, what is anxiety, for us to distinguish that there's a difference between anxiety and fear. You know, fear is kind of like stepping outside of the door of your house and seeing a snake on your steps, and for safety's sake, going back inside. Anxiety, though, is a little bit different. Anxiety is continuing to remain in your house, worrying that every time you step outside of your house now, there's gonna be a snake on the steps, and so you never step outside of your house because you're scared that there's a snake on the step. That's the difference between fear and anxiety. The problem with anxiety is that it affects us in all kinds of different ways and 99% of the time that anxiety is not helpful. 
For example, unchecked anxiety in our lives can lead to physical ailments. They can actually cause us to be sick to our stomach, this anxiety. This anxiety can cause us to miss sleep as we're turning around those things in our head. And that can lead to a whole host of problems. We can, because of anxiety, have a lack of energy. We can even have physical ailments. We can have neck pain or back pain because of anxiety and a whole host of other physical things. When trapped in the prison of anxiety, it can also affect us emotionally. When we are living in a heightened time of anxiety, then we're more likely to snap at somebody. When we're living in a height of anxiety, we kind of get ornery. We're difficult to be around. We're cranky. And of course, anxiety can have an effect on us spiritually. You know, it's difficult to be all God intends us to be. It's difficult to have trust in an all-powerful God who is good and desires our good if we are constantly walking around with anxiety. Now, let me take a moment to make clear this morning, and this applies throughout this series that we're going to do. I want to tell you something important. I want you to listen carefully. I want you to hear that there's no simple three steps. There's no three-step formula to getting rid of anxiety. And while there is biblical guidance for us that can equip us for dealing with anxiety as followers of Jesus, the truth is that some of us will need not only biblical guidance, but you also might need to seek professional help, that your anxiety has been raised to such a level or your anxiety is raised to such a level that you will need to take medication that is prescribed for you. Make no mistake that God only, not only uses his word in the Bible, he does use his word, but God also uses medical professionals. God also uses medicine that he has given somebody the smarts to create to free us from the prison of anxiety. And I want to say to you, that's okay and even maybe necessary. It's not an either or proposition. It's not either or, it's both and in some cases. Well, when it comes to anxiety, some followers of Jesus have the, the wrong kind of thinking about faith and anxiety. Some mistakenly believe that when someone becomes a follower of Jesus, they will somehow be spared from circumstances that cause anxiety. Or even if they have to undergo a circumstance that causes some anxiety, that now because they belong to Jesus, because they follow Jesus, they'll be in lickety split, able to get rid of that anxiety. Throughout the Bible, though, what we see is just the opposite. And that is that oftentimes, people that the Lord used throughout the Bible were in some anxiety-inducing situations, that they no doubt experienced some anxiety. So being a follower of Jesus doesn't give you a pass. It doesn't give me a pass. It doesn't mean that we won't have times of anxiety. In a similar way, there are some who find themselves filled with guilt and shame because they do experience anxiety after all, you know, they read through the Bible and they see in Matthew chapter 6 that, that Jesus said, don't worry. You know, look at the lilies of the field and consider them. And, they, you know, they don't work and toil and look how beautiful they are. And so, well-meaning Christians reason, well, if there's anxiety in my life, that must mean I have a lack of faith. That must mean that I am a subservient Christian. And when we carry around this guilt and shame, that only adds to the anxiety that we've already been carrying. I want to say to you and hope you hear clearly, anxiety is not a sin, church. Anxiety is an emotion. But thanks be to God that the Bible gives us some clear guidance about how we can handle anxiety in our lives. The difference for the follower of Jesus is that while the presence of anxiety is unavoidable, it's unavoidable because we just live in this world, the presence of anxiety is unavoidable. The prison of anxiety is optional. We don't have to live there the whole time. We don't have to be in prison there the whole time. And that's the good news. What if you or I 
recognizing that we will feel anxious, also realize that we can be free from the prison of anxiety. That's what we're doing in this series. We are going to give you some tools to break free from the prison of anxiety. And we're going to do that by practicing some calm, C-A-L-M. We could all use some calm, right? Each letter of that word calm, the C, the A, the L, and the M, stand for a phrase that helps us remember some of the biblical guidance that we are given to deal with anxiety in our lives. So the C stands for celebrate God's goodness. The A stands for ask God for help. The L stands for leave your concerns with Him. And the M in calm stands for meditate on good things. So each week in this series, in these four weeks, we're going to be taking up one of those and seeing what the Bible has to say. So today we are looking at the C in calm, which stands for celebrating God's goodness. Now, if there was anyone ever that had reason to be anxious, it was the early church leader and church planter named Paul. You know, it was Paul who wrote a letter to the people called the Philippians that we read together just a few minutes ago. Well, Paul writes that letter and he writes that letter as a man who no doubt could have felt some anxiety. For the last 30 years before writing that letter, Paul had been ministering all over the Mediterranean Sea. He had traveled thousands of miles. He had endured beatings, including the 39 lashes, which were especially terrible on five different occasions. He had been beaten with rod three, rods three times. He had scars all over his body to prove it. He'd been left for dead once. He'd been in prison, deserted by friends and co-workers, endured shipwrecks, storms, and starvation. Paul is actually writing this letter to the Philippians while he's in prison awaiting trial where he's no doubt due to be condemned to death. He's also bearing the weight of several churches that he started who are now bickering and fighting. So much for the easy life of an apostle. Yet in the midst of all this anxiety, Paul writes to the Philippians, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. And we're left knowing that background of Paul and all that he endured. We're, we're left asking, what? How can he say that after all he's been through? How does Paul maintain his faith during such tragedy and turmoil and difficulties? Well, the answer, church, is found in these six verses with these four instructions that we've read this morning that lead to one wonderful promise, and that is the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. See, Paul was able to write those things because he knew the peace of God which surpassed all understanding that guarded his heart and his mind because he was able to demonstrate calm in the midst of turmoil and tragedy. So Paul's first instruction to the Philippians, Paul's first instructions to us, friends, when we are experiencing anxiety, is to celebrate God's goodness. So that when you find yourself in an anxious time, turn to celebrating God's goodness. Paul writes it this way, rejoice in the Lord always. And then for emphasis, he repeats himself. Again, I will say, rejoice. Paul's first prescription for dealing with anxiety is to rejoice. But how? How is it that, that we can rejoice when facing circumstances like we all face that cause anxiety? What should we be rejoicing about? You and I, church, can rejoice even in the midst of our anxiety because, as Paul knew, and as the Bible testifies, God, even when we're going through difficult times, even when we're feeling anxiety, God is sovereign. God is sovereign. You know, sovereign, and talking about God's sovereignty, is one of those fancy words we use in the church, but it's real simple. It simply means, when we say that God is sovereign, that God is in control. 
that He is in charge. When we say that, that God is sovereign, what we're saying is that God is in control of all life, that God is in control of the whole universe, that He governs our every element of His creation, that He will sooner or later in His time fulfill His divine purpose. We can rejoice, as Paul calls us to do, because no matter what we face, there is one who sits enthroned in heaven and rules the earth, who is in control and is in charge. That's what we mean by saying that God is sovereign and that we can rejoice in God's sovereignty, that, that truth can cause us to rejoice. But if you find yourself anything like me, <laughs> you'd rather be in control then let God be in control. You'd rather be sovereign instead of rejoicing in God's sovereignty. This is true whether we like to admit it or not. You know, if you're a fixer, if something is wrong, we like to fix it. We feel like we're in control, we need to fix it. If someone is messed up, if something is wrong in their life, we want to fix them, we want to make them right, we want to make their situation right. But friends, I want to say, it's not all up to you and I. It's not all up to us. You can take that weight off your shoulders because you are not the fourth person of the Trinity, nor are you or myself consultants to the Trinity. The job doesn't rest with us. It is the Lord's. See, we won't ever experience real peace, a peace that surpasses all understanding, until we relinquish control, until we say, here, God, here's the keys to the car. You drive. I'm tired of driving. I'll just ride along. I will be your co-pilot. If you and I can submit that the Lord is in control, even when life is difficult, even when we're experiencing anxiety, even when life doesn't make sense, we can be at peace because of our trust in a sovereign God who is in control. This peace in life that surpasses understanding doesn't come because we have a lack of problems in life. If you're waiting for a lack of problems in your life, you're going to be waiting a, a long time, longer than you have to wait at the DMV. Instead, this peace comes from believing that the presence and power of a sovereign God is by your side, even when you're facing anxiety, that God is by your side in His power and His presence through His Holy Spirit. This is what Paul believed. It's what we can find in the verses from Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Paul believed that his life rested in the steady hands of a good God. You and I should believe it too and stabilize our souls with the very truth that God is in control. I like the way Proverbs 21, 30 tells us. There it says, there is no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed against the Lord. See, God's answer in periods of anxiety is that heaven has an occupied throne and it's occupied by the one who loves us, who created us, who desires our good. Because of that truth, we don't have to see the problems of the world and look at the problems of the world and wring our hands and fret. Instead, we can see the problems of this world Instead of wringing our hands and fretting, we can bend our knees and rejoice and praise Him who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, knowing that in everything He works for the good of those who love Him. Romans 8.28. If you were here, I'd ask you to say amen. Now, I've shared with you a lot of ought to up to this point. We preachers are good at sharing ought to. We ought to do this and we ought to do that. We ought to celebrate God's goodness and rejoice in the sovereign God in the midst of our anxiety. Let me turn now to, to sharing with you some practical ways that you can do that. The first principle, the first practical thing we can do to rejoice by clinging to God's sovereignty is to remember God's past faithfulness. Spend some time remembering the times in the past. Look back on your life when you found yourself anxious at a previous time and remember how God came through. Spend some time recalling those life events and situations. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you in that, to guide you in this. 
to help you faithfully remember and call to mind God's faithfulness and sovereignty in the midst of the, in the situations and circumstances that led to anxiety and how God brought you through and how God has given you the victory. And then that will give you some assurance in your heart that God stands ready today to give you that victory again. God's people have always been called to remember what God has done. Throughout the Bible, God calls us constantly to remember, to remember. Remember how I brought you out of Egypt, God told the Israelites. Remember how he spoke to us on the road and our hearts burned. Remember the words of the prophet. God is always calling us to remember his great deeds. A second practical step to take to actually rejoice, as Paul calls us to do, in the midst of anxiety and recognize that God is with us, is to spend some time remembering how big our God is. Remember how big our God is. You know, take a moment not just to remember what he's done, but take a moment to go back to the beginning of the Bible and see how he just, with a word, brought forth all of creation. Or the next time you're out on a clear night, take a moment just to stop and to look up and to look up at the stars and realize that he has named each and every star, that he called forth those stars into creation, that he calls them out nightly. Take some time to, to remember actually how big God is, that in all of our human ingenuity, in all that we think we're so darn smart, that we don't even know where space ends. We don't even know and can't even get there. When you consider these things, you'll realize how big our God is and how small our problems that are causing us anxiety are to Him. And that will help you to rejoice in your sovereign God. Still another thing to do to rejoice in your sovereign God in the midst of anxiety is to cling to the truth that God is in control by remembering His promises as found in Scripture. Remember His promises as found in Scripture. Verses like Isaiah 25, 8 through 9, He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day, they will say, surely this is our God. We trusted him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Cling to those promises. Cling to the promises of Jeremiah 32, verse 17. Ah, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. And how about Psalm 121, verse 2? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. You see, in the midst of your anxiety, you can rejoice because you have been given some promises as you find them in Scripture that are made yes, that are made true in Jesus Christ that you can take to the bank that will help you. Finally, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I've already talked about it, but finally, a practical thing you can do is relinquish control and have faith. Just let it go. Stop trying to control every little thing. Stop being a helicopter Christian. Let him have his way. Remembering that as you relinquish control and open your hands, remembering that the worst thing in this life is never the last thing. The worst thing in this life is never the last thing. Henry Nouwen, who was a priest, a writer, and a theologian, tells the story of a family of trapeze artists known as the famous Rodleys. He saw them fly through the air with elegant poise. When he asked one of the flyers after a show the secret of successful acrobatic flight, the athlete gave this reply. The secret is for acrobats that the flyer does nothing and the catcher does everything. This trapeze artist continued, when I fly, I have simply to reach out my arms and wait for my catcher to catch me. 
and to pull me to safety. The worst thing the flyer can do is try to catch the catcher. I'm not supposed to catch. It's his task to catch me. If I grab his wrists, I might break them, or he might break mine, and that would be the end for both of us. A flyer must fly, and a catcher must catch. And the flyer must trust with outstretched arms that his catcher will be there for him. Church in the great trapeze act of life and salvation. Our sovereign God is the catcher. We are simply flyers. We trust, we rely solely upon God's ability to catch us. We don't have to grab, just be caught. Be caught by our loving God. As we do, a wonderful thing will happen. We'll find peace. We'll find joy. We'll find it actually possible to be anxious for nothing. Let us pray. Oh God, you are the great catcher of heaven. You are the great catcher of heaven who dwells with us here on this earth. Lord, we are a people that need some catching. Help us, O oh God, to trust in your sovereignty, in your grace, in your control, that you will indeed catch us, that all we need to do is to fly, is to fly and to be caught, to trust you, to trust your arms, that you bring us to safety in the great trapeze act of life and salvation. I pray, O oh God, this morning for the person that's really battling anxiety. Lord, uh, the things that have gone on in our world in these last days have just heightened anxiety. Life is hard enough when you throw on top of that, O oh God, Father God, a, a pandemic. You throw on top of that, Father God, uh, uh, issues of, of race and reconciliation. As you throw on top of that, O oh God, a contested election where countries divided. You throw on top of that, oh God, threats of war and rumors of war and all that's happening. It's too much. But Lord, we thank you that you've equipped us through your servants like Paul, who wrote to the Philippians and gave us the prescription for dealing with our anxiety. Help us, oh God, to, to rejoice in you in the midst of our anxiety. Rejoicing not because our circumstances are good, not because we're find that life is easy, but rejoicing because you're in control, that you hold this world in the hollow of your hand, that you know our life and you know what we face. So Lord, help us to, to give control over to you. Help us to rejoice that you sit on the throne, that at the end of an election, no matter who's elected, you're still the king of kings. You're still the ruler of this world. Lord, help us to trust you that you know the end of this pandemic. Help us to trust you, O oh God, that one day we will sit around the heavenly banquet table. There'll be no such thing as, as race and prejudice, but we'll all be one, one in you. Till that day, O oh God, we pray that you pour out upon us grace upon grace and that you would find in us trusting, loving servants. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to join me for the hymn after our message this morning. It's called, Shall We Gather at the Rivers, number 723 in the hymnal, the words of which you'll find printed there in your order of worship or up on the screen.
If you would join me in our affirmation of faith this morning, which is the Apostles' Creed, you can find it printed in your order of worship. Let's affirm our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We're now at that time in our worship service where we mark our morning offering. I want to thank you so much for your continued record of giving and for your faithfulness and contributing your, your gifts and your offerings and your tithes uh, to the church that helps to continue the ministry of our church. I want to let you know that if you're a guest with us this morning, please don't feel an obligation to give. Know that our worship service this morning is our gift to you. I do want to let you know that this will be the last Sunday to contribute to our mission of the month, which is Empower House. That is our mission of the month. You can give uh, either online by going to our church's webpage and clicking on the uh, giving button at the bottom of that webpage, or you can give by mail by sending it to our secure PO box. Information about that is contained in the weekly trumpet. This time I invite you to join me in prayer, and then following our prayer, we'll sing the doxology together. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you so much for everything that you have given to us. The big things, the little things, for it all, Lord, for it all belongs to you. Pray that you would take which we give back to you now, oh God, and that you bless it and multiply it. We pray, oh God, that you would use it for your glory. And to honor your name, and to make your name famous. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. At that time of prayer, as we go to the Lord in prayer as a community of faith and we uh, share our joys and concerns, I want to let you know that uh, inside of the weekly trumpet, which you can find a link in the description of the video this morning, you'll f find uh, the prayer list. And I invite you to remember those persons in your daily prayers uh, in the life of, of our church that stand in need of healing and peace and, and uh, recovery and uh, binding up of their grief and all many different issues, but the Lord knows each and every issue and he knows each and every situation and, and each and every name. I'm gonna ask that you would please uh, remember in your prayers June Turner, who will be going for some surgery on Monday, and that you would uh, continue to keep in your prayers Martha Selke, who continues to uh, recover from some surgery that, that she had. Also I wanna take a, a moment of, uh, I guess, personal privilege for lack of a better term to ask that uh, you be uh, praying for uh, Branda Lee. Um, Branda Lee is uh, here with us for our last uh, Sunday here, and uh, she'll be taking some uh, maternity leave. We didn't know quite if she would uh, be here uh, to, today to uh, play for us, but uh, it's all in the Lord's timing, and the, the Lord has not seen fit to, um, um, to uh, bring that little one yet. Uh, and so, but uh, we're trusting in the Lord's timing. I ask that you keep uh, Branda Lee and uh, Jer Jeremy and Coletta, the family, uh, in your prayers uh, as they get ready to um, welcome a, a new one. And of course, um, Branda Lee, have you all picked out a name? It's a secret. So. It's a secret. Okay, so unnamed little one uh, that, that is coming. 
And so uh, pray, please pray for uh, safe delivery and for, uh, uh, it is a she, right? Okay, that's not a secret, that it is a she, and uh, pray for her as uh, she comes in, in, into this world. But uh, please keep all of those uh, in your prayers. But will you join me in, in prayer now as uh, we uh, go to the Lord? Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you so much for this time to come and worship you. Thank you, O oh God, for the freedom and privilege that we enjoy in this country we live in to do so. Thank you for the men and women that defend that freedom. Thank you, O oh God, for the freedom that you have given us in Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for all your many blessings that you pour out upon us each and every day. And Lord, we just return thanks for your son, Jesus, and for all that he has done for us, especially through his work on the cross. But Lord, we thank you for the continued work as well of the Holy Spirit that continues to work on us and in us to draw us closer to you to remake that image that we've been created in, to draw us into greater holiness in love and in life. And Lord, we want to pray this morning for those that we, we know and love who stand in need of, of your healing touch, who need comfort and peace. But we particularly want to lift up to June as she gets ready to, to face some um, surgery, Lord. Be with those doctors and nurses. Be with the surgeon, Lord open his mind or her mind and move their hands and help them, Lord, to have wisdom and bring comfort to June as she recovers. Lord, we continue to lift up to you, Martha. We pray that your hand of comfort would be upon her. We pray, oh God, that you hold her in the very hollow of your hand in these days of recovery for her. And Lord, we pause uh, this morning to give you thanks for Branda Lee's ministry for uh, how she has continued on, even in the midst of this time when she's been with child, Lord, to come faithfully and to provide music for us. We thank you for her sharing her gifts with us. And now, Lord, we ask that, that your anointing would be upon her, Lord, as she uh, nears this time to deliver her baby, Lord, that, that you would just uh, bring her uh, comfort when she's in discomfort. Lord, we pray for a safe uh, delivery for Branda Lee. We pray, oh God, for safe delivery for this little one that we're going to be welcoming. We pray, Lord, that your special grace would be upon her as, as uh, Branda Lee and her family welcome this new addition into the world. Lord, we pray that you would, you would just surround her even now with your comfort. We pray, oh God, and we just rejoice that even as, as she's in the womb, that your hand is, is upon her, that you're knitting her together, and then your time you'll bring her forth, Lord, Lord, the glorious and joyous time that will be. Lord, for all people in all places that stand in need of your grace and your peace, we lift them up to you, both those spoken and those that lay silent. These prayers we lift up in the name of Jesus, who taught his disciples and taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We now move to the time where we receive Holy Communion in the life of our church. It's always a special time to gather around the table, but especially for All Saints Sunday, to gather around this table. As you see, these, these candles that represent those that were lights and saints to us, they're, they're, still, they're still lit. They're still giving off their light. And so we gather with the saints that have received communion at this same church, oftentimes kneeling at the same communion rail, and though we're not able to be in, in church here to kneel at the same rail, or we're able to have those loved ones with us, uh, celebrating communion with us, we know that they are experiencing special communion with the Lord, a communion that surpasses our earthly understanding, that one day we'll feast with them at a heavenly banquet, the Lord's table. 
once again. This morning, as we go through the liturgy, we're going to be using what we call a service of word and table number two. It's the, it's the liturgy that if you regularly attend, you probably know it quite well. There are going to be times when I diverge from that liturgy just a bit to add some special words for this All Saints Sunday. But as I do, I'm going to bring it back to the words that many of you know so well. And so don't get alarmed as you hear me say different words that might be printed in your order of worship. I'll come back to them and you'll be invited to uh, say those words at home. They're the typical responses. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And in the silence of these moments, let us confess our own individual sin to God in silence. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And if you would continue with me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those that we have named this morning, as well as those that we name in our hearts. 
Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever, and all God's people said, Amen. It's at this time that I would invite you to partake of the elements that are before you. If you happen to be worshiping this morning with somebody else, then I would invite you to share the elements with that person. If you break off a piece of bread or whatever you have, give it to that person and say the body of Christ given for you. And then if you will give them what you are using for the cup and say the blood of Christ shed for you or something close to that, then that would be most appropriate. We're going to give you a minute or so now to go ahead and to receive communion and spend some time in reflection as we play some special music. Will you join me in prayer? Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your presence that is with us as we receive this bread and this cup this morning. Lord, may we be reminded of your faithfulness, of your promises, and of your presence throughout our lives, especially in the times of anxiety, so that we might rejoice in you and rejoice in the truth that you sit enthroned in heaven, and you control all things. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. This time I'm going to invite you to join with me in our final hymn uh, this morning. It's called uh, When the Saints Go Marching In. You'll find the words printed in your order of worship or there up on the screen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. If you were a guest with us, we want to especially uh, thank you. If you haven't had a chance yet to fill out the uh, registration form link, I would invite you to go ahead and to do that now so we'd be blessed by knowing of your presence with us this morning. And now, friends, I invite all of us to go from this time of worship, giving thanks, giving thanks for those that have been saints in our lives and continuing to shed 
the love and the light of Christ that those saints before us spread. May we go from this place to share his love in powerful ways. May you go in peace. May you stay safe. May you be blessed. Amen.